All right, microphone check. Uh, one, two, skip everything. Fuck everything. Yo, uh, Gemini Scorpio podcast episode fifty-seven. Hey, man, we some strong motherfuckers. Shout out to the team. Um, babe, I'm sorry. It's okay. We doing it. Uh, just us two today. Yes. It's lit. It's take our first deep, time doing it. Take this. a deep breath. It's our first time doing it. Take a deep breath. Yeah. yeah, Jay has been doing everything. You know, it's a snowstorm right now. Yeah. It's a snowstorm. We are still recording and our most of our team is gone. We did have some team that pulled up though. Yeah, for support. Exactly. Because Monique don't have to do shit. Exactly. Um well Julia Gio is working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gio yeah, working. We took Monique, Monique was working too. We took Monique we took Monique's job off her hand, but she doing other people work. Yeah, facts. <laughs> facts. Um but Yeah. Okay, we made it work. Uh, yeah. when the cameras went down. Yeah. But this is this is the importance of like ownership, and mm -hmm. I, I not to get in too too no, much of my it, bag because we gotta understand this is the podcast is a whole different um, audience. But yeah, it's important to ownership because when things like this happen, like unforeseen circumstances, you can allow people to like chill and, and still get it done yourself. That's why you gotta have your own stuff. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a knock on nobody, but yeah. it's just super important. But let's get to the podcast uh, yeah. episode fifty seven. Uh, some of the gang is in the building. You already know. Menace is here. Christopher Cheatham is here. Pink Celebrity, a.k.a. Monique, a.k.a. Whatever you got to do, she going to get the job done. Gio the Leo is on the audio still. Um, We here. We, we are here in a snowstorm. In a snowstorm. Still doing it. That's why I got my motherfucking hat on. You, you said, know what I'm saying? They had the jokes cut rolling in. They told me I look like Shaka Khan. And we you didn't even get saying? to the, um, they told the me comments I look like yet. My fucking Hey Big Worm. Say, what they call it? A fro? You feel what I'm saying? Now I got a snowfall fro. It's just like, it's a lot going <laughs> a on. You know, like uh, Leon. Yeah. <laughs> but this is my out? motherfucking snow hat, and I love him. You look good, though. You look Thank good. You. you look like a, like. A snow bunny, but black. No, no, no. You're like a dinner plate. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know how people be like snacks? Eat like me. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, OnlyFans pop in after this. Jay's been talking about this OnlyFans for two motherfucking days. Every second, he's like, OnlyFans, babe. So you really don't want to do it? So how much do you think we can get off the OnlyFans if we do it? What are we doing? We doing it. Everything. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. How much oh we for that. Y'all going to pay for that, motherfucker. Okay. Live front row center. What's the price? For, we're going to have to break it down. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, like, I mean, if it's, it's a subscription base. So All what right, are we going to make charge? What are we going to charge? I don't know how OnlyFans work, though, like, overall. Like, I know you pay a fee, but I don't know, like, the metrics. I know some girls charge 20 but I don't know what they're doing for 20 You know I what think, I'm saying? No, nah, some girls be wild and charging 8 $8? Yeah. Oh, no. I think... But uh, depend on your following, because if if $8 and you got um team motherfucking followers, 8 times um team could be 100000 So, I mean, I think you know... We, I think we might could do... Uh, Fifty dollars. Well, I was about no. I was okay. about to say forty nine ninety nine. I think we could get away with that. Might not have a but lot of subscribers, to, but but we would have to give them what they came for. Duh. Ooh. <laughs> but forty nine ninety nine. If we can get a good, if we can get a hundred, I mean, that's not bad. It's not. It's not. Jay's serious. That's why he keeps having this conversation. Like he keeps trying to slide it in there. Like. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about the numbers. And it's not even happening, but he's like, just in case it happens. And right, one day I wake it. up and I'm like, yeah, babe, let's do OnlyFans. All right, fuck it. Fuck <laughs> it, fuck it. How was your week, baby? <clears throat> like, what did, like, how was our week? How was your week individually? And then. So, how was my week? So, I was very frustrated of being in the house this week, mm -hmm. which was really. Normally, I'm not that frustrated, but it seemed like this week I was like super frustrated. Like I wanted to get the fuck out the house. I don't know what it was. I was just like, get me the fuck out of here. So um, I didn't really get to do that through the week, you know, just regular work and, you know, stuff. Um, however, I did do something that I said I was going to do of my own content. So it kind of fulfilled. Oh, yeah. It triumphed yeah. my whole week because I actually pushed forward and didn't take the excuse route out and give myself excuses of why I'm not getting it done. But I was in the house. So I got some additional content coming. Um, and it was dope. And I was proud for that. Yeah, I actually, yeah. so I, we could tell that story. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't think you was going to do it. I know. Because we went to, uh, cause you were talking about this tree. She I wanted my plants <laughs> she and I had a whole this, malfunction with my plant. This plant for so long. It's like, I'm gonna get this plant. I'm gonna do the content in front of the plant. And it's going to be like this. And it's going to be like that. So we go to, um, home Depot 
and it was just a whole bunch of little wrong yeah so she couldn't get it why couldn't you get it i don't even remember it was just a whole bunch of things going on and i could have jay was like go get the fucking plant and i just yeah. was so by that time i was so frustrated i just like what it was we were rushing I didn't want to rush picking my plant because it's a real plant. And I saw so I'm I'm a first time plant mom. I know that sounds crazy to other people, <laughs> but like I'm a first time plant mom and I really wanted to get into it. But I feel like I had to take my time with picking my plants. Like I had to take my time with picking what really resonated with me. I really look at it like when I go pick crystals, my own crystals, I go pick. I know this sounds crazy to other people, but I pick things that resonate with me. So I was rushing. Then I had malfunctions. Then I came out. I was just like, fuck it. We're going. Jay's like, go get the plant, girl. And I was like, not. Nah. So I came home. And Jay thought I was just going X out the whole day. But I told myself with or without the plan, I was still going to get the content done. Um, even though I didn't have this set up ideally, I want it. But it really spoke volumes for me because I think a lot of times we wait for that perfect moment. And I'm guilty of that by a long shot. And like I need it this way so or I'm not doing it or I need it this way. And I was just like, you know what? I'll go back and get the plan. But whatever is in the house is what I'm going to use. But that's why I didn't think he was going to do it. It wasn't yeah. really a, uh, this time it, it wasn't that it was like, um, I didn't think he was going to do it just because he was BSing anything, but because we went to Home Depot, you couldn't get the plant. So I'm like, man, she probably frustrated as mm -hmm. hell. She probably about to say, fuck this content. So when I came home, like you were frustrated or whatever, cause you ain't get it done yet. Yeah. But I'm like, damn. You, oh, because by time, it. it's so funny. Jay goes to work. I'm in the motherfucking house. I get dressed, beat my face, ready to record, trying to get the setup right. You know, Jay's the videographer, cameraman, content guru. Me, I'm fucking going through equipment, trying to fit what fucking camera fits on the tripod. Then I'm looking for the pieces for the ring light and the light. I'm trying to get all this shit popping. And I'm like, whew, I'm hot. I don't know how the fuck Jay does this shit. But I was like, I'm trying. So I tried. I'm sitting, it's so funny because I'm sitting in the uh, in front of the camera and I'm pressing record and I'm like, yeah, so, oh, fuck, this is not how I'm starting. Stop. Then I go, okay, take a deep breath. I start with some sage, bitch. I go, <laughs> record. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm like, fuck, stop, bitch. I go get the champagne, pop, good, good, good. Then I'm like, record. I'm like, yeah, what the fuck am I doing? Like, it took me so long. Jay comes in the house and I'm just sitting on the couch like. You know fucking what? Like, I don't know how motherfuckers did this. You know, and Jay was like, babe, let me make your job easier. He comes in, he helps, and I get it fucking done. But that's what I was going to say. It's yeah. like, it's crazy because I, I came <laughs> and, like, you were frustrated. And I think you were, like, paused or whatever. Yeah, I took a break because I said, me, take a second. Yeah, for me, it was dope because I'm like, um, like, it's, it's, it's you started. Like, you you trying. So I'm like, damn. Like, that's so, that's, that's what made yeah. it so special for me because, like, you tried and I knew. Throughout the day, yeah. how how frustrating that could have been, yeah. like to try to go to Home Depot, try to get this plant yeah. when you had it in your mind, you was going to record in front of it. So I mean, and shout out to you, dope. babe. Thank you, and I also just shout out for having a team because it's so much easier when you have a team. Like I really was setting up by myself, and shout out to you for for so long prior to doing having a team, you were doing so much by yourself, mm. and it really just stressed the importance. Like damn, just being appreciative of those we have around when we are right. doing things right. because when you're doing things on your own, the motivation really truly has to come within mm -hmm. because it makes it that much harder to push through because it's like man if i can't get it right now i gotta get this and this person and if they're not here right now i just can't get it done but you know the motivation coming from inside of you you gotta push through still get through to what you gotta get done because if you keep doing it and the consistency you know i might have my own little team you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like or whatever so outside of like the podcast crew and you know so it's, it was dope it was definitely a good experience to actually push through on something that i've avoided for a very long time but even outside of like having the motivation with yeah. doing it on yourself doing mm -hmm. it by yourself i think you know and i think honestly you kind of introduced this thought process to me is having a team being a motivation factor when you yeah. do have a team because of, yeah. it's, it's been times like even today i'm frustrated trying to set the cameras up the fucking camera went down you know, Alex not here. Yeah. My team not here. The rest of the team not here. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm about to just say fuck this. Yeah, but we're then, gonna get it done but, whatever way we need to. But nah, I, at first I'm like, I'm about to say fuck this. But then I'm like, I got the the team that did pull up. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm we saying? gotta finish for them. Exactly. exactly. It's like, I don't want to waste my time. So it's like right. fuck it. So it, even like in in our times when we argue or something yeah. like that, it's like, yo, it's not about us no more. Yeah. You know and it's saying? crazy because it's a snowstorm, and you know, every part of me, I just didn't feel like recording. And I was like, well, the team is off you know we could just take a <laughs> day off but then you think about it and it's like you know for the what that like, listen even right even yeah outside of that right yeah that listen is like that would be because i was thinking i'm like okay do we need to get on the, the gemini scorpio page and be like hey yeah you know due to the snowstorm and inclement weather we're not recording today but i felt like 
No, nah, nah, like, like you know what I'm saying? Because they did, yeah. But that's why we got yeah. this stuff so we can even do it when yeah. things like this happen. And, and shout out to our team yeah. that Did that's come, not yeah. here. You know, they were definitely, you know, like, you know, if y'all need us to come, we will. Facts. But if we don't have to, nah, you know, because, you know, at the end of the day, roads are what it is and it's a little messy safety outside first. and safety first. So, you know, shout out to Jay for giving some of the team off because I wanted to be off too and I had to come. Sorry, so. babe. Question. So, look. Speaking of your frustrations at that time, yeah. right? We were talking about, uh, like, in a relationship, advice comes so many different ways, right? Well, right. like, not even advice, like, help comes from so many right. different ways. And we have so many different learning styles and teaching styles. And saying that, like, you know, it's two ways to kind of, like, comfort your, your other, right? You have those people that want solution, that's right. like solution-based. Right. And then other people that might be, like, empathy or sympathy-based yeah. is, like, you're going through something, you might want somebody to tell you mm -hmm. what's going on or mm -hmm. you might want somebody to just be there to give you a hug like what do you what do you think you are so i'm definitely so if it's if it's solution based versus sympathy based when there's an issue and i come to you but i hate the word sympathy let's say empathy empathy that's, i that's like that empathy. yeah because it's not necessarily sympathy You're not it's feeling empathy. sorry it's just it's, yeah related right and i agree um so whenever I'm having like a bad day or some, uh, things are going on with me and I come to you and I'm venting to you to tell you what I desire. I'm more of an empathy type of person. Like sometimes I don't need solutions because like I am big on like and, 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 and don't get it wrong when I am seeking solution. I'm probably not clear on that either because mm. like I'm not like, hey, I need help with this. You know what I mean? However, but majority of the time when I'm not looking for a solution, I'm typically always looking for empathy. Well, all the time yeah. I'm looking for empathy, but I'm not clear when I'm looking for a solution either. So but you know, it's crazy, babe, because even that I think about empathy, I don't think that's what you want either, honestly, because <clears throat> I'm going to tell you just from my experience, right? I think when I try or the way I try to empathize with you is different. So sometimes it should, maybe it should be like three categories because okay. you can empathize and then other times you might just want a hug, right? Like okay. if I come home and you're going through something like, yeah. man, I feel you, I've been through the same yeah. thing, right? It's like, like sometimes you might not want to. about you. Exactly. Right. But, and that's crazy though, because I, I kind of want to talk about that because you are that person that just want to hug sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Why, like, why does it hurt you so bad or not hurt, but like, why is it so frustrating mm -hmm. if I'm trying to empathize with you, right? And I'm saying like, Damn, man, I feel you, man. I just went through the same thing. Well, it was it was a, it was a long right, day for right. me too. And I I think it also depends on the issue because mm -hmm. you know I think subconsciously sometimes when we are sulking about something or upset about th something, you know, we in our head we're feeling like we're the only person in the world going like that. Like not we know we're not, but in our head it's like I just hate this. I can't believe this is happening to me. So when another party comes in, it's like I know because when I felt that you know one time I felt that way too, and it's like. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about you. Obviously, I know other people go through it, but right now, it's almost one of those points where I need this to be all about me because I'm trying to still, I guess, maneuver my way through the motions. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So if I step over into, like, think about the time that you had it happen to you, it almost takes away from me maneuvering through the motions. But I don't think that's the reason why I'm doing it. Like, I'm not really doing it to, to right, take away right. from you, even and, though I understand. That's true, yeah. I just feel like, like, for me, and I don't, I don't know if a lot of men do this, but I know for me, I just feel like if you're going through something, the best way me to, sh the, the best way I can show you that I care is to show you that I understand. And the best way to show you that I understand is to show you that I've been through it. So, for example, like, I don't know if, 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 a, if a family member passed, like, man, I know, I know how I feel. Like, my brother passed. That shit was the worst thing that ever happened. Like, I can't, I don't know what to say, but I know, I know you're feeling less feel it together kind of i think that's what i do but it comes off like well it might be your intention it might be what you do what you do do but i do feel like you know i seen one time where it said every time somebody tells is telling a story mm. avoid saying your story Facts. you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. it's not like you know what i mean it's just not always the time and i think that the other person might not feel like their intent might not be to tell like i'm sharing my story to overpower your right. story but Again, every time somebody is telling something about them, you do not need to tell them about you. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Facts. Because sometimes people do deserve. That's why we have birthdays. Like mm. people deserve a special day. God damn, I only got one day. Shit. Exactly. But what I'm saying is, even when it comes to, um, oh sorry, even when it comes to like those type of feelings, like I'm warranted my own emotions some days. Like I don't have to share that experience every single time with somebody else. Like just as much as like we go through things together. Like sometimes when I'm going through things by myself, I'm going through them. Like, you know what I'm saying? So 
kind of be there for me and not make it a we. You know what I'm saying? Like, so how how does that look for for like so for me, a girlfriend like just giving you a hug? Right. Well. I, I do say we're, we're not good at saying which one. That's why I say I'm not good at saying, okay, this time I need empathy. This time I need a hug. This time I need solution. We're not good at that. And I think that's overall something that, you know, just women or just myself, I won't speak for every woman, but those who may relate, like I'm not good at saying which I need because I'm so focused on what's going on mm. that I don't know how to balance on also saying what I need. You know what I'm saying? That's why I think like, you know, as the partner, like, for example, if it was you, I think we need to get better at asking what you need. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, if you come to me with a day and you're venting and, and you know, you're going through things, I need to be able to, because you're in your emotion, I can't expect you to step out of that because you might be struggling with that. Mm -hmm. So I have to be good at say, babe, I understand you're going through what you go. What do you need from me? Would mm -hmm. you like solution? empathy or do you just need a hug right now and i think it would be very much i think it would make it so much easier because then i can kind of stop in my moment and say you know what i just need a hug or you know what i need help can do you think you know somebody with this resource do you think you can help me with this solution because um my brain is shut down right now on it or i just need you to hear me out mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i think the other person and that goes for me you whatever just needs to get better at asking you know what I mean? Because sometimes I think what people do too, like say your partner will vent to you about something. It's almost like you're trying to squeeze in yourself to see how it affects you. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So if I if I come to you complaining about work and like work is hard or cracking down on me, I hope I don't get fired. And we in a relationship automatically like, damn, because if she get fired, you know, she ain't going to be able to pay her bills. I might got to help with these bills now. Goddamn. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like sometimes it's really... You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think we just got to be okay with just asking. I think. What do you need? Like, what, 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 what's your majority? Like, majority of the time, what do you want? I mean, honestly, I think I give empathy because that's what I want. Right? So I think. No, like, I ain't ask you what you give. I ask you what you want. Right, want. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like we mess up because you clearly don't be wanting empathy. Sometimes you just want a hug. Right? Uh -huh. And I feel like because I, I, I unconsciously give you what I want. So, like, in my times of need, I just want you to understand me, you know what I'm saying, or feel me, or you know what I'm saying, and shit, you can help, help, but it's like, I just be wanting like you to feel me, so if I'm going through something, and I don't know, I got so many ideas, or I got so, something to choose from, or whatever the case may be, and it's just frustrating, I don't know what to do right now, just, nah, I feel you, I ain't gonna lie, that shit could be frustrating, you know what I'm saying, Right. or help me, Right. so I kind of, I want solution, right. shit, I want everything, I want right. Solution but, help. Right. Empathy. But how does your other partner just know what you want? I, you know, I remember when we was at the live podcast and somebody came up and they were like, I just be want her to know what I'm thinking. Right. And it's just like, Not how, fast. nigga? Like, how do I know? So, you like, know no, like, if, if I just feel like it takes time, right? But, like, if you know me as a partner, then I don't know. You know what I'm saying? If you know, I, like, the other day, let's role play. Fuck it. Remember right, the other right, day? I was here. going to work and I was upset about, um, a few things, I think. Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't want to mm -hmm. go to work. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the other things? You was trying to focus on your content. You yeah. wanted more time for your content, but yeah. you also had to go to work. You know what I'm saying? Money. Yeah. And then um, yeah, the other car. You tried right. to figure yeah. out the other car. Facts. So, yeah, so it's just... In yeah. that moment, I didn't really want, like, solution. Because yeah. to me, it wasn't no solution to it. I knew what I had to do. I just wanted you to be like, nah, that is frustrating. Well, or or give me some input. Like mm -hmm. maybe if so, I guess that's the solution base. Like maybe if you do this, or yo, let's 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 handle this first, and right. then then if you do this, it'll help you out. You know what I'm right. saying? Like so, I kind of just be wanting some advice. I guess was like just right. Just talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's you. I, I want you to kind of put yourself in my shoes and like tell me what you would do, kind of. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm. But see, so even in that, right? So, you know, sometimes your partner feels like they can see what you don't see, right? right? So sometimes I'm listening, like, for example, for me, at the time when you were venting that, I'm listening and I'm thinking, maybe he just wants to vent. Because, mm. one, I know you have answers that right. you sometimes don't want to answer yet because you're just venting. You're okay. just getting it out. So I'm thinking, like, I'm going to just let him vent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to intertwine with, a, like, saying, nah, I relate. Or, you know, I did say, like, nah, I feel you. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't going to say like, well, what I think you should do unless you ask. Mm. But that's why I said as a partner, my end or your end, I think we have to get better with asking. And I think that was the first time when I was 
embarking on this conversation that I asked you. I said, I was like, do you want comfort or do you want sympathy? But I do like the transition of the word sympathy to empathy. So Mm. I will say I was like, do you, you know, to reenact it, do you want a solution or do you want empathy? It's crazy because we're having this conversation, right? Yeah. And (laughs) I didn't even know this, but Alex, shout out to Alex still working on his days off. He had put the difference. So the The difference uh, between sympathy and empathy, this is wild that it's on, right? right? So he said the difference is meaning... uh, the difference in meaning is usually explained with some variation of the following. Sympathy is when you share the feelings of another. Empathy is when you understand the feelings of another, but do not necessarily share them. Mm. See, I thought empathy was sharing, but I guess, oh, so we can say sympathy, I guess. Okay, so it is sympathy. So I'll read okay. it again. Uh, the, difference is mean, the difference in meaning is usually explained with some variation of the following. Sympathy is when you share the feelings of another. Empathy is when you understand the feelings of another, but do not necessarily share them. Mm. Okay. So, would you rather have sympathy or empathy? A hug. <laughs> empathy is when you understand the because, feelings, because, like, honestly, but don't like sympathy, like you share the feelings with me, but I don't really want it because I don't want. Sometimes I don't want to share my moment, mm. like especially when I'm so, like when I'm in my head, I don't want to share that. Like you mm. know what I'm saying? I'm in my head. I'm trying to get out of it. I ain't trying to really jump into somebody else's head. You feel what okay. I'm saying? So all that to say is. I think, and I think this is even getting me to kind of dig a little deeper in myself. I think I'm more so of a, I just want affection, hug, just give me a hug, baby, it's cool. You're going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? More than sympathy, empathy, or solution. Right. So what if I, I think, but it's times where I did give you a hug and like, yeah, I think even that probably wasn't. I ain't going to lie. You don't. That ain't an often Bae, thing. Remember when I said it ain't an often thing. I ain't never said when, you ain't um, never did it. It's just think, not an often thing. So what was the what was the issue we ran into when um remember when um your grandmother passed right so right and I was just trying to be there for you right I was right. like I was just trying to like be right. there for you but I think you still was frustrated in that moment. So if I could re- recollect properly, I remember at the time when my grandmother passed and I was just like going through and I think at a point. You were being there for me, but I think you chose empathy, sympathy as a mm. way. And you brought up like your mother going through something at the time. But in my head, I'm like, bro, my grandmother is dead. Your mother is still here. So I don't really care to hear about your mother because m- my grandmother's not here at all. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So it kind of caused us confliction because you were trying to s- give me sympathy by saying, you know, you know, my mother is in the hospital, right. rah, rah, rah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro. I'm burying my grandmother. So I get you're trying to sympathize with me, but I don't care about that right now. You know what I'm saying? And not in a rude way, not trying to say, you know what I'm saying? So for me at the time, it kind of hurt my feelings because I, you know, as a human, I'm automatically thinking like, you're making this about you and it's not about you. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? And not ideally that that's correct because I'm not saying that's correct at all, but out of human, you know, just out of being human and the space you're in sometimes clouds your judgment and your vision of what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So if you're telling me about that, all I can think of is like, baby, I'm over here worried about this funeral, dealing with my mother because that's her mother who passed away and things like that. No, so that might have been a, I can't stop and think about that right now. That might have been a wrong time. I think I, I just remember one time, when I didn't like empathize and I was just trying to like quote unquote mm-hmm. be there for mm-hmm. you. But I think you still were like frustrated. But yeah. I don't I might but, but that's why I said I think the easiest way would to be just ask. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I also feel like what it does is when you ask, it also allows the other person to kind of stop for a second and kind of pause and kind of think about really where you're at. Because right. you know, when you're sulking in your head or you're in just your head and you got a lot of things on your mind and you're you know, you're in that place and you're trying to vent it off. Like you're really not stopping. It's just kind of building up and you're in your head and you're trying to get out of it. And the minute somebody asks you, baby, do you want sympathy or a solution or do you just want a hug? It kind of makes me stop to think exactly what type, like where I am. So I know how long I'm grieving. See, I ain't like, going to lie to you though. I just feel like in our moments, even if I was to say that, I feel like it would be so weird. Like even if I was to be like, um, even if you said it to me, like, Babe, what is it you want from me right now? I think just being real, my human, like mm-hmm. me being a human, I think I would be like, nigga, I wouldn't say this, but yeah. I'll be thinking like, what you mean what I want? Like, you should just know. Like, I just want you to Yeah, play. but I think that's, you know what I'm saying? I, that's why I say I don't understand why it's so abnormal. Granted, a person who's not consistent and this is new to me, mm-hmm. this whole, you know, element. But I think it's so weird that it's not normal, that people really feel like, you know, like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like we're so selfish. Like, mm. you know, just even when it comes to our partner and the hard time, sometimes, like, 
we are very selfish unconsciously. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, just because I'm going through something, like, you have to stop everything you're dealing with in your own personal life and be there for me. Like, and that's why I said, you know, when you stop, you get a chance for a person to think about it because now I don't have to take up you. Like, for example, if I'm going through something, right, you may not have, you might be going through something at the same time. You may just not have vented that off yet, right. but I'm venting now. This is my time I'm vetting. And obviously you're probably going through your own thing. So you, the fact that you even have to stop is like, it's kind of like, what do you want? Right. Like, you it's know like, I'm, nigga, I'm going through my own okay. shit. Right. Right. You wanna, right. right. But selfish. because we're so selfish, you know, it's almost like we take away, we, we almost feel like I'm going through something. The whole world needs to stop and be there for me. Or like everybody, anybody close to me needs to just understand what I'm going through and deal with it on my accord. But it's just not reality. But outside of being selfish, right? I think it's a lot of, uh, to do with, you know, expectations, right? And this is definitely selfish, oh. but it's expectations as well. Cause I feel like a lot of times people expect out of people what they're giving right. them, right? So right. like, I want you to be what I am. So if I'm, if I'm going through all this shit, and I'm holding it in and I'm frustrated well, and I'm not saying to, nothing. You need to hold it in and not say nothing. Exactly. Too, but that's so, just not reality. Yeah, Everybody's different. But, you know, I think a lot of it comes to, you know, like we have to just continuously work on not taking what we're going through out on other people. Like even subconsciously, like how, you know, like you might, you, like you said, you asked me and you feel like I wasn't as, it didn't help anything when you, when you gave me a hug and it didn't go anything. But subconsciously, I'm almost low key taking out onto you. It's like, yeah, you gave me a hug, but nigga, it's not helping. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. And subconsciously, do I'm something taking, else. Do more. Do, do, do more. Do something else. And that's so unfair to the other party. You know right. what I'm saying? Even saying that for myself, that's so unfair to you to even feel like that. You right. know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, just for a solution base, I think right now we have to practice mm. because we don't have it down. And we kind of have to, you know, we could be the guinea pigs for how this work. You know what okay. I'm saying? Maybe we can come back and share how this works. But we have to practice going forward. You vent it. I'm baby. Baby. Mm. What do you need right now? Right. Do you need a hug, empathy, or solution? Mm. And I think that will just solidify what area of need you're in. Not and then dope. when somebody can understand what need you're in, they can be there for you the right way. Now, self needs to understand that when you tell somebody what you need, you need to be very specific. Because mm. if that's really not what you need, and you ask them for that, and they give it, and you feel still feel un unfilled or unsatisfied that is actually something on you and you Damn. don't get to take that out on the other person Damn, that's a fuck you get what i'm saying yo no nah, i like that yo first of all i want to give a quick shout out to um mahi's brandy uh black owned dmv bakes make sure you check them out uh, that's m-a-h-e-e-s-b-r-a-n-d-y mahi's brandy uh, of course, make make sure you check them out. It's a uh, brandy. Yep. Liquor is really good. Bomb. Trust me, you're going to love it. Shout out to Mahi's Brandy. Babe, we were talking about, um like, in that conversation, we were yeah. talking about, like, a lot of subconscious and your subconscious yeah. way of thinking. Yeah. And it's crazy because I feel like the subconscious is almost created, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost created mm -hmm. since we were born, the things mm -hmm. that we see, what we're around. Mm -hmm. um, but saying that, I'm curious because it, it kind of affects our relationship a lot because or not even just ours, I'm pretty sure it affects a lot of people's relationship, just what they think and where they came from. Yeah. Of like just holding barrier on somebody else, right? So I was I was curious, like, how do we outgrow our subconscious that our past created? Like, I feel like- Woo, that's crazy. Because like, honestly, like, you know, like- the That's other day, crazy. We was having a conversation. Yeah. And I think sometimes, of course we make mistakes, but some mistakes are- a lot on somebody else when that's all they seen, right? Mm -hmm. So like if, I don't know, hypothetically, right? Let's say if a woman has been abused her entire life, mm -hmm. right? And let's say I get, she meet a new guy, he's a good guy. Well, no, nah, that might be a stretch, but let's say she meet a new guy and he's so frustrated that, I don't know, he bangs the wall. Mm -hmm. her, her subconscious, because she's been yeah. uh, abused all her life, she's like, oh, nah, this is a sign of abuse yeah. and I'm not going to stay yeah. and it's, it's over, not coming. right? Yeah. And although she might be right, but I feel like it happens in smaller areas too. Like, uh, we was having a conversation the other day and we was basically um, talking about, you know, um, you you explain it because, you know, I, I don't want to explain Wait, it. Wait, what's, what's Remember, I, we was arguing about the, our argument the other day. We was talking about, and I was like, what did you... I was saying... Oh, 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 oh. Um, okay, so the term... So it's so crazy. So the term 
Jay used that day was, I take care of you. And my first saying was, nigga, you don't take care of me. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Right. In hindsight, Jay was saying, like, nah, I take care of you. Like, you know, like, I, I look out for you. I make sure you're good. And he absolutely does. But in my mind, I'm like, nigga, I still, like, yeah, you, you know, you are completely a great man. You do your duties. But I'm like, I still fund I myself. Care myself. I nigga, take care like, of myself. You know like, like, I you got, know got what my I'm own shit. I got you... my own shit. I got my own job. I pay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I got offended instantly because I'm like, I don't really want no nigga or anybody saying they take care of me. You right. know what I'm saying? However, like, you know, you ever went out to eat with your friend is like, nah, I got you. Right. It's no different. Yeah, like, like, you know what I'm saying? I got you. I'm not saying like, I buy all your meals. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I took it like that because he said, I take care of you. But he was just saying like, like, for example, say you, I don't know, you make sure you look out for, I don't know, your mom or whatever. It's like, nah, I take care of you. I make sure you're good. But it's not like saying like, I fund my, my parents' whole life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was that same thing. But I was so irritated by it because, but it really didn't stem for, from Jay. It stemmed from just past thinking of, you know, I had dealt with a lot of people. Like, you know, I'm really big on like, you know, God puts people in your life, um, even if they're seasonal, if they helped you, it was really just God like giving you a person to deliver whatever he needed to deliver to you at that time. Right. But it seems like I've had situations where people was like, nah, I did this for her, that for her. And it's like, whoa, bitch, you never funded my life or you never did. But you did give me a helping hand when I was in need. And I right. think that's OK. I've helped tons of people, you right. know, what I'm saying when they were in need. But it doesn't mean I built them up, got them started. So subconsciously, that's something that sticks in my head. And I think one time when Jay and I were in an argument, I think, I don't remember what the term, he might have said, yeah, he said something of the term. And I remember we got into a further argument about that. So going forward, when he said it, I triggered back to that. And I was like, oh, oh, baby, don't get it fucked up. But it wasn't that, but that's subconsciously bringing in my past traumas that shaped that. Is is why I think of it like that, even though I knew deep down he didn't mean it like that. But instantly in quick motion, I'm like, nigga, what? You don't take care of me. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't that. But it's also like it also like what happens is, you know, sometimes you can apologize and you can get over over something. You understand that was a mistake, but it also makes you kind of hold on to things more. Right. Because like I said, I'm not just super squeaky clean over here, right? Because right, I right. have said something in the past yeah. where it, it might have seemed like that, but I did apologize for that and I thought we moved forward. But yeah. because you in already have moment, your... Exactly, you already got your right. subconscious and now I did something before that right. reminded like you trigger, of... It's like a trigger, like exactly. it comes it quick can be and fast and you, you, it's flight or fleet at that point. Facts. But like even for me, I think like one of my... um One of the things, my subconscious is just like, you know, ha- never having my own shit. Right. right. So like when I was growing up, I always had to like fend for myself. Right. Like the things I did have, people would like just try to uh take and 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 not even on that, just honestly, I remember a time where like I was staying with the, like a lot of my friends and things like mm-hmm. that. And I, I have this this part of me that you know know how to treat somebody else's house because you don't want them to say something. So I remember right. I used to go over people's cribs and I had to sleep on a pallet. But by the time I got up, I had to make sure it was clean because if I don't clean it up, they're going to say something that's irritating as hell. Right. So like now when I'm a, as an adult, when mm-hmm. I have my own stuff, I kind of want my stuff to be treated like I had to treat other people's right. stuff. Right. Right. It's like, right. yo, <clears throat> if that's that's my car because I take care of it, I do this. Yeah. That's 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 my, whatever, right? Right. right. And I think when, <clears throat> when somebody mistreats it in my mind or don't yeah. do what I, I wouldn't would do, do, yeah, right? It triggers me. Right. And right. I think that's our subconscious just that's creeping up on us. But how do we outgrow those things? Hmm. Like, really? And well, for, I was going to say, I'm about to say, too, well, whatever. So basically, um, we got notes from Alex, you guys. Right. So basically, uh, the subconscious mind is a data bank, you know, for everything, uh, which is not in your conscious mind. It stores your beliefs. Well, it says, uh, yeah. yeah, which is not in your conscious mind. It stores your beliefs, your previous experience, your memories, your skills. Everything that you've seen, done, or thought is also there. It is also your guidance system. So mm. it's basically a guide. It helps guide us, like, right? <clears throat> Which is crazy. It helps guide you, but it also stores. It's like a data bank that right. stores everything. Mm-hmm. So just picture anything that, that ever happened so, bad to you. Yeah, yeah, and you're being guided by that. You mm, know what I'm saying? Sometimes, damn. sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever lesson you might have got out of that, you could be guided by that. That's yeah. also in your con- that, subconscious yeah, too. So it's really which lane you want to take. Do you want to? be guided by the bad part of the subconscious of the bad you've seen or the good part of the subconscious you know, you've seen. You know what sub, you me. know what your subconscious create? What? Stereotypes. Yep. Judgment. Expectations. And I was about to say most important, 
It makes people just mm -hmm. mentally. You know why? Because that's why when we have these arguments, you always hear say, why girls don't. Right. Or why, why niggas all, don't. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's these crazy. These niggas be. Exactly. Right. Because in our subconscious, that's all we saw. So we don't mean right. to kind of categorize right. you. Like, you hear a lot of people say, don't categorize right. me. Right. And you know how girls even like, you know, I, I've seen many of times like, you know, it be like this guy versus girl thing where girls always like, yeah, niggas be like, girls bash niggas all day. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But in reality, they're just saying what they have saw right. in their history, like, or what they've seen so far in what, their though? life. But that, exactly. But both sides though, guess what yeah. though? Girls are only saying what they saw. Yeah, but and guys on are other, only seeing not even saying that, what they but, see. But not even that though, on the other side, all girls aren't bashing niggas, right? right. That's just Real what you shit, see. But so that's it's, what you see. It's, right. it's crazy. That's who you follow. That's like, so just like that's who they dated. You exactly. know what I'm saying? It's the same so thing. It's like, so the question, uh, how I would answer when it says, how do you I'll grow that? I'll grow that. that I past. think that you continuously have to choose better. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to choose better so that you can see better. So that way you're less judgmental mm. because you've seen another perspective. You're less, what's the other two you said? You're less judgmental. Uh, you're less stereotypical. Yeah. And you're uh, less, um, it was one more you said. But uh, long story, yeah, yeah. it'll make you, because I really feel like a lot of, you know, if it, if, if our conscious is our data bank of everything we've seen, experienced, right. whatever. Therefore, we've obviously learned a lesson through that point at some time. Like a after a while, like for example, when niggas say like got girls are always bashing men if they're bashing men is because of what they saw so it's like okay when do you change the cycle of what you are seeing mm. you know what i'm saying so now if all you've seen for example uh, like girls will say all niggas cheat or all niggas lie you know well maybe you have to look deeper why are you dating those kind of men mm, damn. or why are you attracted to those type of men or you know things like that and that's why i'm really big on just praying for discernment because you really have to get good at choosing bad or good, like, or good over evil. Like, you got to know what is good, what is not good for you. You know what I mean? And I think it, just like our, it says our conscious is our guidance system. Mm. I think it'll resonate which one if you just really listen to yourself sometimes, so. But I feel like, you know, it, and it also makes people stubborn, right? And, and like, let's not talk about it as always bad because it right. can be good as well. Yeah. Because a lot of things you learn, it makes you, it helps you not make those same mistakes over. Right. But I think coming with that, like not wanting to make those same mistakes, you'll see some, you'll see something that might look the same, but that's not the same. But because it's, because it's, yeah, you've seen it before. You're you not even going to go, you're not even going to go down that line. That's I learned from you, actually. Like I know before you told me like, just because something looks the, looks same. the same doesn't mean it's the same. Right. Like for example, like you brought up in the beginning of how like a girl might have been in an abusive relationship and she's with a guy, he might be frustrated, he pushes a wall. He punched the wall because he doesn't want to punch you. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like right. he's not trying to hit you and not to say that punching the wall is right, yeah, right. But you got to understand like if she left right then and there and she doesn't realize that guy might have punched the wall and be like, you know what? Let me go see a therapist because I don't want to punch walls either. I mm. will never punch a girl, but even punching a wall is just as bad as punching a girl. Not just as it's bad, not, but I'm saying, but, but it's just you as, should be able, you to, should be able like, to control yourself. Exactly. Right. So. Then she just missed out on a good guy because she's frightened because it might look similar of where it can go, but she didn't see the other side of where it could go. Right. If you get what I'm no, saying. That's a fact. Man, so basically we just gotta and I think, you know, I think it's the same thing, you know, like just keep work work I'm sorry, oh, excuse me. What the, what the, <laughs> keep keep working on ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And that, it's just that's the hardest part about life yeah. working so yeah. especially when you with somebody else because yeah. you, got, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. you gotta work with somebody else. But I feel like just continue just Doing those mental push-ups, right? Right. Like doing that mental workout. Right. And understanding that. It is like, a mental workout. I'll call it the mental gym. The same way you go in a gym and you mm -hmm. got to work those muscles and everyone to make the body even, the posture sit up. It's the same thing as your mind. Like, yeah. you got to go to a mental gym. Like, yeah. same I, thing. I think we just got to do a better job at, like, you know, as fucked up as the world is, man, just do a better job at, like, seeing the us good in them. in it. Yeah, yeah, and the seeing good. The good in because it. sometimes we ain't good either. But yeah. I say yeah. seeing us because everybody always so quick to be like, this person is that. Well, what are you? What are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the what fuck are you? you? And honestly, it's one of those things is if you're like, what they say is don't throw stones in a glass house. Like, mm -hmm. you can't be looking at somebody else if you're not looking at yourself. Because exactly. every time you look at somebody else, you got to remember there's something about you that you need to be looking. So don't look at me. Look at look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't look at them. Look at yourself. Facts. That's me talking to me too. So, Babe, yes, sir. Question. I got a question. You every so, time you got a question, you get I get 
No, no, no. So Lex, shout out to Lex too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lex in the city. She Lex, got us. She got Lex us right in with the these city drinks. Pulled up, got our drinks together because Lord know I poured some bullshit. You know, it was a st- thunderstorm. She said, "You know what? I ain't gonna leave y'all hanging. I'm gonna pull up." It was a thunderstorm. A snowstorm. But you. That's why I have on my. Wow. Shout drink out to Lex in the city. Yo you said it was a saying? thunderstorm. What it's the definitely fuck? Definitely. A snowstorm. I got my motherfucking snow hat on. Fuck you, man. Babe, so question. No, no, no. So you know we got all these challenges on Instagram, right? So the last challenge was the busted challenge. Now it's the silhouette challenge. Yeah. I'm curious. First of all, you ain't slick. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about it. Come on. Tell me. Because you told me you told me you was looking at them silhouette challenges with them niggas' dicks and shit. So this is my question. Ain't no question. No, no, no. I really... Nah, no, no, you no, told no, me no. you was looking at them... Uh, this, hold you up, told me you were looking at niggas' dicks and silhouettes. Up, nah, hold up. Nah, this is nah. my question, right? You screenshot and trying to turn the regular? This is my question. I didn't regular? screenshot shit. Don't play with me. Hold on. This is my question, right? So the men's have stepped up and did the silhouette challenge, oh, they stepped right? they up, huh? I'm saying... Oh, that's what they did. <laughs> laughing my ass off. Don't stop. It's like, I'm just joking. Um... Wow. But here, no, I'm just joking. Wow. But this is my question, right? My so that's question what you is, do in your spare time. My question you watch fucking a bunch of is, my question is this, right? Because I've seen many of niggas with girlfriends liking these silhouette challenges, retweeting them. Why is it that niggas could like the girls who do it and repeatedly watch them like, oh, that's lit. But if they see their girl liking the same challenge, they're upset. Because it's a nigga. It's a bitch. Why would you like a nigga with his dick all out? Why would you like? Why would you like a a bitch like? And let's get it. Let's not get it fucked up. I've seen girls. So hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This around. is what I'm saying, ladies. Helicopter. Ladies, y'all are doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. I love this silhouette. You challenge. like the helicopter? Hold on. Challenge. Some of y'all ladies is wilding. It looks good. I'm not saying it doesn't, but I'm talking about they fully bent over. I seen a girl fingering herself in the silhouette challenge. I seen a girl popping a split, yeah, dropping it on a handstand. I seen, yeah. I, seen a, I, Jay's lying because he has a smirk on his face. I didn't see that. I, I seen. I, I seen. seen I, I've seen girls literally doing the most. It looks great. Don't get me wrong. However, I've seen a lot of niggas with girlfriends liking, liking. I'm like, oh, look at that nigga with a girlfriend liking. And then I know for a fact if they dare seen their bitch liking one of the niggas when they do their little shit and they. Do what they do, what they think, with the silhouette challenge. Doing? Helicopter, you like the helicopter? They, shit. I didn't see nobody do a helicopter. I never said that. Okay, I seen some else. What I you didn't did? See that. What you saying? Do a seesaw? Nah, yeah, seesaw. Oh, I you like that shit? I seen the seesaw. How many times you watched it? I didn't. I seen the seesaw. How, how many times you watched it? So I it How played. Hold on, it? I'm about to tell you. It played and it threw me off. That was the first men when you I won. You... And then I went back because I was so shocked. You lying? You know, you I know did. it was a dick. No, nah, but it threw me off. So I was like, hold how, up. This- how does it, if you know it's a dick, right? You know it's a dick. You don't got to go back. I know, but it threw me off. Ain't so no I had butt. to go back and look because I was like, wow, nah, they're really you doing to see this. The dick again. It wasn't the dick. It was just like, no, it wasn't the dick. It was just that, wow, I can't believe niggas are really participating in this. But if but it was then, a dick, but you here's know- the thing. So I said, oh, hold on, listen, right? Really, you need to relax. Shit. You kept me. No, because you've been watching big buses. Every time I turn around, Jay, I, his phone is in. I walk away, bust it, bust it. That's what I'm like, hello, I'm in here. I can hear the song. I'm like, oh, he watching ass again. You feel what I'm saying? But no, long story short, right? You know, so it's funny because I seen like people like Bash and men do it. And I was thinking about how men feel about how they can't participate because when they do something, it's so much more vulgar than if women doing it. And that's that separation that I man, think people fuck be talking all that, about. Man. You say it was a dick and you went back to it. If I if I scroll down my Twitter and I you see some it. shit, I'm going to scroll way that's, back. That's fa- that's I'm going right, to go If I'm sitting next to you. I'm not going back. No, if I I'm sitting no. next to you because I didn't I see your ass. Go up, come back down, zoom in, and leave. Listen, what so I'm, don't play with listen, me. You Go ahead. Here, I ain't man. never seen it. You ain't here. Don't, so Nick, I know ladies have seen. They niggas think they slick. Those scrolls pass it. They'll go back. They'll look, zoom in, zoom out. And I'm like, now nah, scroll. Fuck babe, you talking I, about? But, babe, Fuck you, you talking about? I seen that. Babe, you keep talking. You make yourself look stupid. Look, I'm going to tell you why. This is what happened. Why I'm making myself look I'm going to tell you why. Because I wasn't saying nothing about girls. I, I know I look at the girls But sometimes. my point is, then, if you're saying something about girls, you cannot dare tell me not to say nothing about guys. You can't. It's the same fucking thing. Don't bring that misogynistic, patriarchy-ass thinking over motherfucking here because that's not happening. All I was saying was, I know you went back to look at it because you- I did. I did go back and look at it. I said that. You ain't let me speak. All right, my you went back to Jay's You went line. back to look at it because you wanted to look at it. My whole point was saying was, if I scroll down Twitter, I wasn't talking about ass. I'm like, if I see a nigga on some wild shit, I'm scrolling way past it. 
Okay. I'm not about to go back and see it, but like, okay. oh, what wild shit is this? So what I'm saying is when you seen that silhouette channel with his dick, you went back because you wanted to see it. It didn't go back because you couldn't believe it. You went back because you wanted to see it. But because it was some shit, nah, because it was some shit that you didn't want to see, you would have scrolled past I mean, and it kept I look going. At, there's never something I don't want to see that I scroll past. Like, I look at the girls. I look at the girls just like I look at the guys. It's no different. To me, if you ask me, all of it is soft, it's soft porn. So it's no different than niggas watch porn. I watch porn. I've seen niggas and bitches in there doing their thing. So you encourage porn. No. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. Cool. But I don't. But what the fuck is he talking about? I, but I don't watch that type of porn. Like, you know that though. Now you don't. But don't say you never watched porn. Yeah, I with watch both. solo porn. That's now, it. Solo. now, but don't say you never watched. Exactly. Yeah, so my yeah. point but is, but I ain't like it. Cause I, I ain't want nigga dick all that, over the that screen. Should, that's, and that's fine. But I never said I was gonna go go back and look at it. That's but you I did. did. You went. No. You scroll past. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I did. I did what you did. I scrolled up. I and scrolled you zoomed down. In. I didn't zoom Ooh, in though. You I didn't zoom you in. Told me I that's didn't what zoom I in because it was a video. It was a video. So you can zoom in on videos. Oh, I didn't do that. You but zoomed no, in. No, this what I watched it. My girl, I ain't zooming on dicks. What the fuck is going on? No, no. The video ain't bust so long. What is it? Thirty seconds. And you can pause it. Go back. Rewind. Flip it and reverse it. No, I ain't rewind. And I ain't paused, but what it did is it played, but I was so shocked. I replayed it, and then I was like, all right. All right, so let me ask you this question, man. Mm -hmm. If you catch me staring too long or looking too long at either one, which is worse, silhouette. the silhouette challenge or the busted challenge? It's a silhouette. Ladies is wilding. It looks great, ladies. I'm not taking it from you. However, ladies is wild. I seen some shit. I was like, what you yeah, see? I see it. Let me see. damn. Show it to me. I didn't save it. I would have to go find it. I don't know. Like, I didn't save it, but I seen some So I ain't really seen ones, no wild ones. And they're fire. I ain't, how, are they, how are they fire? Nah, they fire because like I seen a girl. Can you share it to me I'll try it, but I seen a girl standing on her head, did a split, whatever, then fingered herself and then mm. came out. And I was like, oh my. Oh my God. What she did what? Uh -huh. She so she was on her head. She was on her she so first, you know, she started, she did a little leg up, Joan. She did a handstand on her head. First it was two hands. She put her legs in a split. She took her hands up and did the poop. And Damn. I was like, oh, you like my God, it looks cute because it's the silhouette. So it looked really nice. But you can see what's going on. It's almost, like, know, fuck, it's almost like fucking in the dark and looking at your shadow. You know, what they, you know, they say, you know, you know, they mm -hmm. say you can like you can uh put some certain colors to it and make it like regular and see. That's some creep nigga shit. Like, I ain't gonna lie. You got to be horny and shit to pause or screenshot it. To edit it to try to see what they really yeah because like? when I realized what the challenge was you know in preparation of making my man his own I'm not gonna post mine to the gram however but you posted that busted challenge because I think the busted and it's that, that's why you said you asked me which okay. one was worse I said the silhouette okay. but the busted I just feel like is a dance I don't feel like it's nothing crazy but the silhouette they that shit is porn bro that shit soft porn you feel what I'm saying so okay. yeah but when I seen what they did with the light do you keep the light on it's a filter. So uh, if all the nigga got to do is remove the filter, I mean, that's some creep shit, but you a creep. You a freak freak. Damn. So wait, wait. So you get, so the lights are on. The light, add, you leave the, the light filter. on. It's just a filter. It's a filter. Yeah. Babe, we was watching this. We was actually looking at this, um, this one story. <laughs> we was looking at this one story when, um, the dude, uh, he's an offensive lineman. Uh, he's a, uh, football player. Chad Wheeler, he faces charges of a felony domestic domestic violence abuse. Mm. Um, he uh, he played for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, the King County Prosecutor's Office filed criminal charges of first degree domestic violence assault, domestic violence, unlawful prison, uh, imprisonment, and resisting arrest. Wheeler, a spokesman with the office, told ESPN he is accused of twice choking his girlfriend until she lost consciousness. Damn. And then you said you heard. Yeah, that, like, uh, it was because allegedly that she would not bow down to him in the physical realm, like mm. literally bow down to him. Damn, I felt she was black and he was white, right? That's correct. Sheesh. I mean, if you wanted to be a slave owner, just say that. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. You know, I just feel like, you know, it. it <sighs> Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I don't know what to say to that because, you know, and um, God bless the girlfriend. You know, she came out and basically said that he choked her unconsciously and went and ate dinner. And when she got up to run to the bathroom, when she finally awoke, he was like, you're still alive? Yo, I'm in the... So this is what I got to say. Niggas who like domestically abuse women 
are cowards. I'm going to tell you why. These niggas be so pussy that, like, I just feel like, I don't know, like, I'm not saying that you can't get frustrated. I'm not saying people don't make mistakes and things like that. But when you put your hands on a woman to intentionally hurt her in these situations, I just feel like, for me, excuse my language, I just feel like you're a pussy. Yeah. Because, like, I, I say yeah. that because, like, I don't know, like, me, I'm scared to, to put my hands on a woman because, you know, I know what I can do. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm, I'm not saying that people don't make mistakes because I, I would never say that, but I'm not making yeah, it right either. However, like, I feel like in these situations, the extremes, like, choking a woman out, right? When she's getting up, go to the bathroom, say, I'm going to surprise you, still alive. That's sick. Like, that's, that's so sick. Nah, it's sick. That is cowardly to me yeah. because it's like, bro, do that to me. And, and that yeah. goes to my point, right? It goes to my point of, I think, you know, like we said, like black women especially are the most unprotected, unprotected woman people right. in the world. Not even women. And, and quite frankly, a lot of what's happening right now is, you know, the only reason why it got so known was basically through Twitter and right. it going viral. However, like, you know, it's so many times that this happens. And if a black woman comes forward, they get no support or it's just like her word against his or these type of things. And now it goes viral and, you know, these things happen and her family was supporting her and speaking out on her behalf. But it's just like, you know, like you said, it's just coward behavior. Like, and you but, know, he did speak out and say that, you know, he's going to get the help he needs. She's going to go get hit, the help she needs. But it's like, baby, you knew you needed help before that. Why does it take for you to get there for you to get the help? Like, you know what you like if that I'm, I don't care. Nobody's going to tell me. Somebody who chokes his girlfriend twice and then alleges that if she got up that you're still alive, I know for a fact you thought of something similar before. Or I know for a fact that you got frustrated beyond a point where you knew it was that's too much. So why does it take almost killing somebody and surprise she's not dead for you to finally get help? That's bullshit. I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, it's... Yo, being sick is a real problem. You know what I'm saying? Like, mental depression is a real problem. However, real life is real, too. Let me tell you what I mean by that. If these women had niggas in their corner yeah. that was kicking these niggas' asses, real shit. that mental retardation shit, you gonna, yeah. that shit going to go out the window. Yeah. You're going to be thinking, like, yeah. yeah, I ain't that retarded. I ain't trying, yeah, to, get my, yeah. I ain't trying to get killed. Yeah, and think you know, it's this. crazy, though. That's Bro, so I, true. No, no, I swear to God, like, if, yo, think about this. If you grew up and you thought it was okay to, to put your hands on a woman or even... Even do something by mistake. And right. she had brothers. And, they, and her brothers kicked your, your ass. ass. I mean, whipped your ass. I feel like niggas and that, think and twice I mean, about I putting hands on women. Into, period. When you're like men. And it sucks because it puts so many men in different positions. Because like, you know, even if you're not a brother, we want to ideally believe the men in support would support the women in their lives. So like, say even if she had cousins, a male friend. But you know, a lot of men, like they sometimes don't want to get involved because they know that they have to go to those extremes. Right. Yeah. And it's like, it's one of those things as if the men period in her life or somebody would, like you said, go whoop this nigga's ass, you know, he's a football player. That's an assault charge. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's so many reasons why, you know, you really guys to have some niggas around you. who don't give a fuck. And I was about to say, I was about to ask you the question. Up. Do you think, but don't give a fuck. saying that though, do you think niggas are just getting scared? Like niggas are like scared to to because it be niggas so that be putting what, their hands on women, and it be niggas in in in, in these ladies' uh, lives, but they just probably yeah. Don't do so nothing. I was gonna say, you know, because social media tough is a thing, and people just be honest, people not putting their hands on nobody no more. That's why I feel like there's so many gun shootings going on because people are scared. Like you know, what I'm saying you gotta remember, like back, you know, even like where we come from, niggas throw hands like. Period. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the old school that you want to or put them in a ring or like let them like let them shoot it out. Fair one. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I do feel like people are scared because it's more so the embarrassment. Like, you know, it's I really, truly believe that people think it's they're less embarrassed than fighting somebody and getting fucked up and people having to know they got fucked up versus killing somebody. Mm. That's wild. So I think I think I think it's crazy because like. I don't know, man, because I think back in the day. You, shit, you mess with the wrong girl, niggas. Yeah, niggas will ass. whoop your ass. I feel like yeah. nowadays, I think because People the guns, are scary. Yeah, because it, the guns are in a, in a yeah, and then it's social the media. Word, yeah. Like you know, what I'm saying, like just you know, just imagine like fighting a nigga that beat up your sister, and you and can't then you beat get up. your ass whooped. And oh, then it's recorded. Oh my god, and it's recorded. Yeah. Now you stupid, and your sister gonna get her ass beat again. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like that sucks. Like 
You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and just all in all, I just feel like the law enforcement does such a terrible job when it comes to, you know, domestic violence victims. It's a lot of times, like, they'll get a restraining order. That shit don't really do shit. You know what I'm saying? That shit don't really do nothing. Like, it can't protect you. Like, there's really no way out of that. Like, the only way women can really protect themselves is by getting a gun. Mm. And that's it. Like, the only way to protect myself, I'm going to have to get a gun and kill you. Like, straight up. That's yeah, a lot of pressure. I feel like, you know... The the generations did change, yeah. and just not even the generations, the type of people, bro. Because yeah. I feel like back in the day, yeah, not even back in the day, just like when I was younger, like I feel like if somebody put their hands on a woman, period, like even if she wasn't like my sister or my girlfriend, like you still might get your ass yeah. whipped, like just yeah, to be just honest. like what type of what type of what you think this is? But honestly, in jail, like if you go to jail for like shit, like fucking with women, but and do kids, they? But do they? Well, I know what my stepfather would tell me. And my no, stepfather and, and would tell me. that's back in the day too, though. But my stepfather in jail was in jail for a long time. He was like, if niggas Them come in jail bitch, yeah. for fucking with women or kids, they get bad. They get it bad. Right. Okay? They I, get it bad. I think I think um, it's crazy because I think even that generation changed, yeah. right? Think about this. I don't know if uh, Nipsey Hussle kill, killer is uh, was in PC still. Okay. But I think he's still like waiting trial or some shit like that. So it's like, I think the generation just changed. Cause yeah. A lot of shit just wouldn't rock right. back then, right? But anyway, back to this this knucklehead. Um, yeah, bro. I, I feel like. Well, I said fuck Chad Wheeler. Pray, prayfully praying for healing for his girlfriend and her family as she gets through that. You know, it seems like most of the men with you know some type of clout or superior you know being just by, by being an athlete or uh, a person in the that entertainment they get away or get a little leeway so you know hopefully she gets the justice she deserves for sure facts baby mm-hmm. i know where we're going so we had a conversation about this the other day mm-hmm. we're talking about this ti and tiny situation right so i think like I'm like, gonna drink again, cause God damn. It was like fifty girls, fifty or thirty? Was it thirty? Thirty-two or fifty-two? Last time I checked, they had like forty. Okay, it's like forty girls, but let's 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 play fair because we'll play fair. Uh, what's the allegedly forty-something mm-hmm. girls came out accusing um, Ti and Tiny of like sex trafficking and I don't like that word they use. Yeah, it's not sex trafficking. However, I do think it's other things. Like what? Uh, manipulation. All right, so let's say manipulation, uh, sexual. Let's say let's say sexual manipulation. Yeah, like forty something girls, maybe more yeah. now, came out to accuse Ti and Tiny of sex manipulation. Mm-hmm. One thing that I don't like about this, right, okay. is they're coming out via somebody else's page. So we don't know if it's someone that's upset with Ti and Tiny mm-hmm. making up these stories. Mm-hmm. Or if these stories are real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The other thing I don't like about this is I think for the most part, all these women are grown. Right. Or so grown and, you know, of age. Okay, we'll of say. age. Let's say right. of age. So it's like if you do something knowing, like you knowing what you're doing at this point, you're grown. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, I don't want to say that line because at the same time, I, I feel like women who have a story. Mm-hmm matter i think they yeah. should matter right and, and they shouldn't be questioned right it's just i don't this story has so many loopholes i don't know it's what to so believe but you but you were saying you was kind of on the other end of the stick you was like nah i believe well, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on a couple si- well it's not that i'm on a couple sides I, I definitely think the story has a lot of loopholes but there's just things that i look at that i just feel like it is what it is like i feel like as far as okay obviously the girl sabrina glam university I do believe she was friends with T.I. and Tiny. And I do believe at a time she was with the shits that they was on. Okay. And I do feel like, feel like whatever they got into, you know, that caused her to be upset with them, led her to basically expose them. What I don't agree with is just because you're not friends with somebody, oh, don't expose it now, baby. You should expose it then. Yeah. That ain't nice. Especially like, you know if what I'm it's saying? wrong, it's wrong. Like, because, like, you know, it's wrong, it's wrong. So you knew it was wrong oh, then. people's... Same. You knew it was wrong then, but now you're mad at them. Right. Now it's wrong, wrong. You feel what I'm saying? Well, because you lost something. With now that. you want to. However, Ti to me, I ain't gonna lie. I cannot stand to hear Ti speak. I think he's completely misogynistic. I think he's very controlling. 
Um, and that's just by listening to his delivery of how he talks about women, of how he translate his uh, situations with how he deals with his daughters, of how he treats his wife. I just don't think, I'm not surprised by what I'm hearing because I feel like those type of men display these actions behind closed doors. That's just what I think. So, babe. Yeah. You've also called me misogynistic before. I do think you uh, have misogynistic ways. Okay. And I won't yeah. say you're wrong for that. Right. Because I don't... Matter of fact, can we pull it up? What, what's, can somebody read the definition of misogynistic? Can can somebody, oh. somebody read the definition. Oh, I, you guys I could do it. I could do it. Because yeah. I feel like... But I wouldn't... I'm not about to rape nobody. Yeah, yeah. I don't think... So, here's the thing. But women are saying that they no, feel no, like they've been raped. Okay, so misogynistic. Strongly prejudiced against women. Right. I said you have misogynistic ways. I think he's a misogynist. It's a difference. And because like sometimes I just feel like, you know, society has delivered these misogynistic thinking on us. That's why, you know, women get the vote last and all these things. We know that. And I think that men by default took on some of those traits. However, there's men who I just feel like is this way. You get what I'm saying? T.I. to me has always talked and delivered in that manner. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he just said that he would never like to see a woman president. Literally just said. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, he's very so prejudiced get, against women, if get, you ask me. Getting into this, right? Yeah. So we we had the conversation about, like, just uh, substance abuse or or just yeah. using substance in the, in the moments of having sex. Right? right. And we were saying, like, I feel like in the court of law, yeah. somebody can't give consent if they're under the influence. Right. And that's, I don't know how I feel about that because. So I ain't gonna lie. I read all 40 of these motherfucking stories. Mm. I am not gonna lie. And these shits were wild. And again, politically correct me. I have to say allegedly because obviously these victims wrote Sabrina and she was translating the message for them, mm -hmm. right? Some of them would ask to have their face covered. Some of them she was showing that their picture. So I don't know. However, this is what I will say. Even just hearing him come out and say, basically, whatever, they didn't sexual, they didn't sex traffic anybody, but they said that whatever him and his wife was with, they, they was with. with. So therefore, it lets me to believe that he's, admit, he's admitting partial of the fact that he had the engagement. So after reading all four of these stories, this is what I just feel like I will say just about the commonality of the stories. I think, well, Truthfully, a lot of the girls knew they were going to have a threesome with Tiny and T.I., mm -hmm. Tiny being the recruiter, right? What would happen along all of the lines is that once they get there, there's a lot of drugs mm -hmm. and there's a lot of aggression. Mm. And people need to understand something about women. When you are there alone and you don't know the consequence of saying no, I can see why women would just go with it. And that is intimidation. That is bullying. That's what do they call it? Cohesion. Um, that, that is where that's a no, no. And I feel like there's a thin line of, oh, they was with the shits and I pressured them into mm. something. You get what I'm saying? And I do believe they went there knowing it was something, mm -hmm. but when they got there and they seen what type of time it was, I'm sure. And you got to understand a lot of these stories, he took their phone, they would ask to leave. They wouldn't let them leave. They wouldn't be able to leave without a fight. And a lot of times they'd get so coke. They would have to. He'd force them to take coke. And at that time, they're so coked up. They're blacked out. They don't even know what's happening. And then you can't. You got to understand if I'm drug like this, allegedly, allegedly, if I'm drug like this, I can no longer call the cops because the cops can't believe uh, somebody who's under the influence or they don't know what happened. And somebody of T.I. and Tiny's influence, it's now their word against mine. So I was going to say, you know, like when it says force, right? Right. And I think this is what I was talking about, just our culture and, mm -hmm. you know, rape culture mm -hmm. and just our culture as growing up and seeing things. And just because, let's say you, let's say you do know what's going on, right? right. You come over and I'm like, yo, you should try this. No, I don't want to try that. Come on, don't be, you know what I'm saying? Even though that's not right, we do this in our everyday yeah. lives. For example, we're talking about how on birthdays, right? Even with our friends. And I'm not making excuses for this. But it's mean. like, if this is going to be okay and we're okay with this, why, why is it such a surprise when, when the same thing happened? For example, I'm about to go back, go, go back into my example. It's on our birthday, right? You got your friend with you and you want your friend to enjoy that birthday. Your friend said, man, I ain't drinking that much today. 
But you what know. what what the do, what does their friends usually say? Come oh on, nah, it's your birthday. Put your head you know what I'm saying? Shot, it's your shot, birthday, right? Shot. Nah, it's your birthday. Bro, but let's say in a bedroom, the same these same vice versa l- things that I've learned yeah. in my everyday life. You come over, yeah. you're down with Don't it, be right? A party pooper. And now you come over and now you change your mind. What you think I'm gonna say? Come on, man. And I'm not saying right. that this is right. You I'm not. You know what you was coming I, yeah, for. I, and I, I want to be. I want to be. I'm not saying that this is right. However. If we're gonna, I just feel like if we're gonna feel these ways, we need to feel these ways and correct this time. behavior. I agree. All around the board, right? Because it was that the same way. If you come over and you change your mind, and I shouldn't try to convince you, should be the same way. You don't want to get drunk. I shouldn't try to convince you. I don't know. Um, whatever the case may be, if you come, if 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 if, if you're not in a mood and you change, let's say we all having fun, not even getting mm-hmm. drunk, and you just you kick, and like you mm-hmm. said, somebody be like, "Don't be a party pooper." Mm-hmm. They could have found out something. Mm-hmm. Some could have. They could have really not wanted the party in that moment. But we're trying to convince them. So I feel like these behaviors happen around the board. Again, I'm not saying that if this right. is true that it is right. However, I'm saying where do we draw the line at understanding right. that this is this is kind of human nature, right. it, honestly. Well, see, I just think not raping somebody, no, not human trafficking. Said. I'm just saying, like trying to if somebody come over and they change right. their mind peer and pressure. say peer pressure right. exactly right. there's just mediocre peer pressure and there's high intense peer pressure right. we we'll just say it like that right what I will say is I just think the fine line becomes when you know it's morally incorrect and mm. I feel like at a time when you listen into these stories like first of all you know if you coke up girls you know they're blacked out bro they don't know what they're doing but I think it's no different than you know it's and it's bad to say men do think like men have always done things like even on dates, they like keep drinking because they know if you get drink, you're going to get loose. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It's no different than Coke. They coked up. They're going to get crazy. You get what I'm saying? But you know, after a certain amount of women, that's morally incorrect, bro. You mm. know that. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know better. And I think like the reason why the line is so thin and I and me personally, just seeing how T.I. moves and just watching things, I, I believe the girls. I'm just going to say off the rip. I know guys who push the limit but don't cross the limit. Mm, you okay. get what I'm saying? Okay. I feel like he has crossed the limit. You know what I'm saying? 40 women is a lot of motherfucking women. We ain't talking about one, two, three. We have 40. Now, if a couple girls say, like, you know, they come back and they regret what they did, it's like, uh, you kind of knew what you was getting into. But when 40 women come through, and some of them are not just coming with the cause, some of them don't know what was, you know, some of it was happening in a way where they didn't know what was transpiring. And by the time they turn around, it's like, yeah, you get what I'm saying? And it's just, I just feel like this is what I'm big on. Like, even with my daughter right now, right? And I think, like, a lot of girls didn't get this treatment, which is why I'm so big on it now. Like, I always say, like, bro, like, I tell my daughter, personal space and my boundaries, bro. Like, you got to be get comfortable with telling a motherfucker, no, that's my boundary and that's my personal space. No. Period. You know what I'm saying? And I stand behind it so much that I'll get an ass whooping for it. Like, even if I'm in the, like, my personal space and my boundaries are mine. Period. If I say I ain't doing no fucking coke, I ain't doing no fucking coke. And if you want to send me on my way, if you want to beat my ass for it, do that. And we're going to have to see it out later. But what I will say is a lot of women, because I don't think that the issue I think with a lot of women is a lot of women don't know how to say no. Like even I can go into detail when just being a younger girl and a guy will push up and kiss you. You really don't want to kiss him, but they keep pushing up on you so you kiss them you know how many times women have sex with niggas when they really didn't want to but like nigga kept pushing up it's like all right because i don't want to fight the battle of fighting you and women shouldn't have to feel that way if men had some self-control so i don't want to put it just on thin line niggas have to have some accountability like bro if women get good at saying these are my fucking boundaries this is my personal space back up and when niggas learn self-control like, you know what? My bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's your personal space. That's the only time that it can fix. I don't think it's a... I, without that, niggas going to keep... But I want to... With, without self-control, they're going to keep doing the same thing. I want to ask you this, though. And I, I kind of want to... I, Because I, I can speak on both sides, right? Um, Well, I can speak on the men, for sure. But one thing that I'm curious to know is, like, yeah, men got to have some accountability as well. Mm-hmm. But how do how do we hold the woman to accountability? hold a woman accountable because this, yeah as a kid agree and i'm not saying that i'm not saying that all kids did this or whatever yeah. can it be but yeah i can understand you've been yeah. a teenager and you you fall into that peer yeah. pressure of somebody kissing you not want to do yeah. it but as a grown adult right if right. somebody's saying no you know you know we're creatures of habit and that's why the parents have to do a better job because mm. if you teach your boys self-control and when a woman says no it means fucking no and i dare you to do it i as your parent i'll whoop your ass you get what i'm saying but as 
a female same thing like learn your personal fucking space and don't let people up in your space and if you say no is no i think it really comes down to the parents because i think a lot of this I, like these patterns even of rapists rapists don't just wake up and be like they want to rape it they want to rape you rapists had that in them from yeah. a long time ago they didn't just wake up one day and do that 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 built up aggression that built up that's been building up for a long fucking time. You get what I'm saying? So that's just something that is, you know, and it sucks because a lot of it is coming from just a lot of trauma. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like even R. Kelly saying like, you know, he was molested as a child. So this is why he's the way he is. You know, a lot of that comes from that. But like just the generation going forward, we have to get good and comfortable with having these conversations with our kids. Like, yo, keep your hands to yourself. Don't be touching no females. You need to learn how to tell a nigga no. Like, don't be fucking scared. I'm not raising you to be scared when a nigga push up on you because you can't say no. Now you don't have sex with this nigga. And you didn't want but, to. But as a as a, I'm, I'm again, yeah. I'm just curious because I feel like there's a lot of things that we can do as men. But since we having this conversation, I'm I'm, I'm curious to know yeah. when do we look at the woman and say, well, if you went over there yeah. for this intent, yeah, you should have stopped but and turned around. Thing. We have threesomes, no? Mm -hmm. Right, not to say it like that. Like, we that was wild. one. I didn't mean to say that. We have one. But I'm saying right, we had... You can have a couple okay. more. Like, but. Relax. But here's what I'm saying, like, right? It's a difference, just, right? We had threesomes. It's a more. difference, right? Say you were sending me out to recruit the female, mm -hmm. right? It's one thing she know what she coming over here to get to, but if you're forcing coke down her nose and she didn't know she was coming here and it was a whole bunch of drugs over here and you were going to... That's not something she signed up for. Right. You get what I'm saying? But so if, she, if I came... I can come into... Like, you got to understand... Being a swinger ain't a new thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Which I'm sure there's healthy, way to, healthy ways to do it. Yeah. Right? So therefore, if people want to do these things, I'm sure it's like, oh, the consent is mutual. There's another aspect of it is when I enter in that field and I'm alarmed by the things that's going in there. And then you take my phone and I can't leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing. If somebody come over here and they change their mind, I'm like, okay, no worries because we ain't trying. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. You know what I'm saying? But- when people are not okay with somebody changing their mind, that's not no longer the victim's fault. Right. That's their fault. Yeah, and I'm not saying that that's not the case. However, I'm saying for less, I'm saying in the opposite end of a woman coming over here and she's prepared, right? Right. And I say, yo, you got to do these drugs. Like you, nah. you just right. You say, you see how as but easy you, as you can say nah, example, but, but I'm saying as easy as you can say nah, right? Right. I'm thinking, I'm looking at you, and I'm saying. When do we hold the woman accountable of not putting that foot down and saying no? But what see in this instance is just different to me because they're saying no and it's still being forced on. So I'm like that's what I'm saying. Some of these stories, I don't know if you read all so of them. I'm reading, so I'm then reading that's all rape of them. Then. It is. Right. So it is. Again, it is rape. Right. Is so it, you can't hold a woman accountable in rape. Period. Like that's like telling a girl to wear jeans. You, yeah. Don't don't wear skirts know, but, because a nigga will yeah. rape you. You can't. Yeah, you can't hold a girl accountable for for for, well, for rape. But but what I will say is I'm not saying that women have to use a better judge a judging. Like do I want like first of all and that's why I say it's hard because there's women who want to have threesomes and that's fine. I'm so, not judging them. However, it doesn't mean when you get there that I gotta do all these but things. Again, you know but what I'm saying? Again, so like, we, that's so, what I'm so saying. I feel that like it's just a difference. I feel like the conversation we're having is, is so close to co co coercion mm -hmm. and uh, you know peer pressure, right? So what I'm saying, like I said, for like in our everyday lives, right? If we're if we're saying, yo, it's your birthday, right? It's I people want you who to don't drink, up. right? Right. It's people who don't drink like that. I've seen it happen mad times. Right. People and don't drink like that. And people are like just take a shot. But guess come what? Come on, just take a shot. I like, like I feel like right. that's just as wrong. But because if you come over here, right, and, mm -hmm. and I assume that you know what's going on. And I'm saying, yo, but just because just I know it it's a party over here doesn't mean I have to drink. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but I'm I'm saying the fact, like the act and trying to get somebody to enjoy themselves. That's an everyday here's act. Here's the thing. I think that's wrong because the way you enjoy yourself is not the way I no, enjoy myself. I'm not. So no, here's what I'm saying. So to have a, in their aspect, right? To mm -hmm. have a threesome, I don't need no fucking coke. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. I'm not saying. Listen, I'm not saying that that's not wrong. I'm saying because that's everyday life. If somebody was to do that in any manner of it, right? Like, if we're going to hold people to these standards, we need to hold them to these well, standards here's the thing. all around. I could say that, but that's the d different was. Even if you go to jail and murder, it's different levels of murder. You got capital murder. You got, you know what I'm saying? You got your levels. Like, uh, what is the other one? Um, You got manslaughter. Man you, got, yeah, you got first you got degree. You got second That's degree. why I said, like, I get what you're saying, but there's different levels of. I'm going to look at peer it as a different level of peer pressure. Because if my friend comes over, and even though I agree, we have to do a better job because we don't want to make people uncomfortable or force them to do things they want to do and they're upset now or now 
they're sick because they knew they shouldn't have drank that many dr drinks or whatever, right? If we have a friend and comes over to our gathering and we keep forcing them to drink, I think that is wrong. Right. But I don't think it's just as wrong as that. So I feel like it builds, that builds up to that because I can do that, because I can do that in another setting, I'm going to be able to be like, yo, like we just having fun, have some fun. So here's what I think. I think when it comes to this situation, I think there was women that was with the shits because there is going to be women that are with the shits. And right. I think what happened is there's women who are with the shits. And when you get amount of women that are with the shits, even when you get to the ones who are not, you're forcing that on them because people have been with it. And I think that is not OK. Mm. And I think that's the difference of what I'm trying to say. Now, again, just because it worked on them or work with them, it doesn't mean it works with these ladies or it doesn't mean it works on that accord. So you can't just force that and use your power to overpower that. That's not OK. So, nah, that's right. So what I'm saying is, so you, you saying that you don't think the woman can be held to no accountability I'm in not these saying situations? That. I'm not saying that. So the how do, how, 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 do we, how does the woman hold accountable? In, in these? So this is why I say it, it sucks because, you know, I seen somebody say, stop having these after parties mm -hmm. because what will happen is sometimes it is truth in this, but it opens the doors for groupies to be able to be like, oh, yeah, he did it to me. He did it to me. I don't think that's right. You get what I'm saying? So what I will say is, you know. go back to your question because i was going to go in two mm -hmm. lanes right how women can hold themselves accountable it, this is hard because i don't want to take away the victim aspect of it because i feel like but we can't as say, a victim so as the only thing i could say is don't go but if you're with the threesome i feel like that's not nobody right, like that's but even okay if you go, but even if you go but, you can't so you tell me there's no accountability and getting there and if somebody say yo try these or you should try these but not to said, no it's like not, nah i don't thing. want to if that was just the story i would understand that but because the stories are saying bro i said no and i wanted to leave next thing i know my head the nigga is telling her to snort the coat out of his hand and they grab her head and snort the coat till she blacks out. And I can't, that, that there's no way for me to say if somebody says, let me leave and no, and they don't let her leave. I cannot hold her accountable because she tried. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Now in a normal setting, yes. Like baby say no, like mm -hmm. to, hold, to hold women accountable. You have to say no. When it's something you do not like, do not use the likeness of somebody else to be like, you know, I, I, I fuck with them or they're a celebrity and, you know, I want to be in the room. So, you know, what I mean, no, I'm not doing that. Like you you have to say no. If it's something you're uncomfortable with, do not go against that for the likeness of anybody. However, in a situation where girls are saying no. Right. No, I'm not. So I'm not talking but about I have to, but that's in those moments. Talking I'm talking about, about in the moments when, oh, okay. when you so have the to, choice to say no. To separate and you don't the say moment no. from the situation with T.I. and Tiny where I'm just being very clear to separate that moment because I'm not going against the victims that said what they said, but to go into another side. Yes. You have to learn to say no when you are uncomfortable. Right. Period. And I ask you that because I feel like I can't speak on a woman for like, I was just curious, like, but I feel like gotta be some type of accountability in there. But for the men, you know, I but think just to be my bad, I mean, no, to cut you off. but just to be honest, Jay, like, like you said, right. When we were talking about Chad Wheeler, he was like, you know what you could do with a, to a woman. Mm -hmm. Women know what men can do to a woman. You get what I'm saying? So a lot of times I just think that people just do have to understand. And this, I, 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 I'm holding women accountable, but men's aggression is overpowering sometimes. Okay. And I don't want to take that away from them. You know what I'm saying? Like there's been times like I'm a strong female, but in certain situations, it's hard. No, like, you know what I'm saying? Because men are so aggressive sometimes. It's their way to highway. And then you're scared of what they will do to you if you say no. You know, because we do know what you will do. You right. know what I'm saying? Because it's so hard for us to see the softness of a man that we don't even sometimes consider it because they're so hard all the time. So you're continuously living on that edge. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's hard. It's yeah. hard for women. No, and I, and I, I definitely understand because I feel like as a man, we have to be able to teach our younger, we gotta be able to reverse this rape culture because we can't sit up here and act like this doesn't exist. Like, cause rape culture is real. I feel like when we was growing up, even the songs that I, used to, like, I was listening to the other day, like, um, I think I was listening to Get Low by uh, Lil John and the Eastside Boys, right? Like, but the lyrics are so ex it's been explicit, like that. right? Right. Yeah. And it's like, we degrade our woman since 
children. So uh, even songs was I wish I could fuck every girl in the world, right? Like even like to them that might be entertainment, but as children we're coming up thinking like, oh, this is cool, right? This is what I want to do. This can happen. So in these moments, I feel like we gotta be able to like teach our kids that this isn't the right way. I'm gonna tell you what I think, right? Although I want to believe that we could reverse rape culture, but it's no different to what I feel about rape. It's going to uh, uh, a race, excuse me, rape and race. Look at that same word, same R's and category. But what I will say is I think the issue is going back in history, white men been raping our women, right? Mm-hmm. And I think the problem that we need to realize is some black people, they're not thinking like we want racism racism to end like for all like I don't want this to happen to you I don't want this to happen to us a lot of them want the power of privilege that the white men had yeah, they and they can't take it out on white people so you know who's the next in line black, black women. women right and I think that's a big part of the issue like it's not just oh take care it's this is what subconsciously has been ingrained and because the reparations isn't coming in hand they're taking it in whatever power they get. And unfortunately, black women has been at the disposable of men forever. And they can't take it out on white men. They can't do that because unfortunately, that's how it's been ingrained. But guess who they can't take it out on? Black, black women. women. And no matter, before it was Bill Cosby. Then it was R. Kelly. Now it's T.I. After T.I., it's going to be somebody else because that is just the cycle. And it's unfortunate. But that's just where we are as a society. And it's sick. So It's sick. And what I'm saying, I can't speak for the women. So I'm trying I'm to try to speak for the men. Like, in those situations that you feel like that, you know, again, this is, comes with the upbringing. And, like, it's not just rape culture. It's just the thinking of a man, the misogynistic thinking of a man towards his woman, right? I feel like all these are come from entertainment. All these come from what we see. And I think as grown no, men... it didn't come from entertainment. It came from white people when they were slaving us. And then it went to entertainment. Okay, well, I'm just telling you, I, I'm 29. I didn't what? see whites. I didn't okay, see that. So what enough, I'm saying is enough. from... In my generation, all I see, this is, came from what I've seen. Yeah. Right? And I think, you know, as grown-ups, we had to do a better job at raising our children to understand that this isn't right. Because the more that we see this, the more that we think it's okay. So, yeah, I, I might cross the line. You know why I'm going to call Cap on you? Why? Just an hour ago, Julian's playing Lowe's. Mm-hmm. You said, you know what? I like this Queens and King shit, but I get tired of that. I want to hear that chitty chitty bang bang killer nigga fuck a bitch. That's also the issue. Right. Because even if it's entertainment that started you, if entertainment changes over, you don't even want to hear it. Okay. Bae, all I'm trying, like, I keep trying to make a point and you keep like cutting me off to see what you're saying. It's like your third time saying it's like, I said I couldn't speak for the... I'm saying I couldn't speak for the woman, so I'm trying to speak for the man. That's why I gave you the opportunity to speak for the woman. How can y'all take accountability? So I'm saying how we can take accountability, Mm -hmm. but when you you keep going and you telling me how you think we should take accountability. I didn't say that. I just was saying... You said first you said... why it's hard is because of stuff like that. Right. You said uh, entertainment. You wasn't around for slavery, but you was around for entertainment. Right. But your first point was... The slavery part, then is this part. So I'm saying, like, I'm trying to tell you how go I ahead. think men should take accountability. I'm not taking away from you. I was just having a dialogue, but you can go ahead. All right. So again, so my what I think how I think men can take accountability is being able to teach their boys or teach their young men coming up the opposite of what we learned. And I think a lot of the, again what what I learned in my generation it came from entertainment. It came from what I seen on TV. And if we can be able to teach the opposite, we won't think this. So to your point, when I when I hear. Uh, let's say Los, shout out to Los, you know what I'm saying, Baltimore. But if I hear Los and I'm like, yo, yeah, I don't want to hear this right now, right? Like I want to hear some chitty chitty bang bang, whatever, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm like, I feel like it's a, it's a cool balance. Again, that comes from what I'm used to. I'm used to hearing this. That's my preference because of my options growing up. If we can be able to instill something else in our children, then they will think differently. The only way I think, the only reason I think I want to fuck every girl in the world was because when I didn't know better, that's what I heard. And that's what I thought was cool. But now that I'm a grown man, I know differently. And I can tell my son that, nah, and I can, and I can, and even deeper, you know what I can do? I can explain to my son that this is entertainment. This isn't real life. I wasn't, I didn't have nobody to show me that this is entertainment versus real life because all I saw coming up as a young man. And I feel like a lot of men do this. There's no excuse because now we're grown. Right. But I feel like a, a lot of us seen the get lows, right? 
When you, you know, bro, you scared, you scared, duck that thing to the floor. You know what I'm saying? When, when I see, uh, I wish I can fuck every girl in the world. All this is my reality because this is what I see on TV. This is who I want to become. And if we are able to tell our children, our young boys specifically that, yo, this is entertainment. Talking like this is wrong. And even down to the fact of like, I might be being scared right now, but even down to the fact of not letting them listen to that. Just being honest, because that's just not reality. And if you do react or you act in these ways that's what you hear in your songs you're going to get arrested this isn't real life just like if you hear music talking about selling drugs and you go out to try to sell drugs and you get caught you're going to get arrested this music isn't real life i feel like we got to do as, as, a job as, as as that and then again when we get grown we got to understand like holding our friends accountable you know what i'm saying like i'm in a fret and i'm there's a lot of things that i'm gonna just be real like that i probably wouldn't be um proud of of looking at my past the parties that we had the things that i said but if I was, if, if, if my friends were to tell me that that wasn't cool, then maybe that would have did a better job for me. You get what I'm saying? Because I was doing it because that was the cool thing to do. We got to be able to change this, this idea of what's cool. We got to be able to change this idea of what a real nigga is, right? We got to be able to change it into a way of like protect your woman, right? Don't be scared. If you see somebody, if you see a man treating a woman wrong, check that nigga. Because that's not right. Don't be scared. That's just what I think as men is hold myself accountable. And even like, like I said, y'all like, yeah, you might can go out and party and be like, hey friend, come on, you gonna drink? But understand when you're in the presence of a woman, it's different. You gotta understand your, your, your power that you have. Like if, if, I, if I have, if, if I do have a little bit of stardom, if I am a social influencer, whatever the case may be, I have to understand as a man, and not even just an influence, I have to understand as a man, the presence that I, that I stand in the presence of a woman, because how she can feel, she might feel intimidated. So I can't be as aggressive. That's what I think men got to do when it comes to accountability. Yeah, I, and I agree. I agree. Um, when I was talking to the entertainment, that's just another you know, topic only because, unfortunately, you know, a lot of little boys don't got their fathers to tell them the difference. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. But, you know, just talking to the ones who do, you know, you have to do your part no matter what. Mm. So, you know, and that's why I was putting it more so on entertainment because, you know, that's just what's out there. But that right. was out there when we were younger, too. So, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't change the fact that we still grew up and decided to look at a different route. Um, and again, just as far as women, you know, like I said, like, you know, I think just people have to really get good with telling their daughters their personal space. Like something big, what I do with my daughter is like even when she's invading my space, I make sure I use words like you're invading my space. Mm. You are in my boundaries. You're in my personal space because her. I need her to be able to say that to somebody else. Like right. you're in my personal space. You're like nobody has to be up all on you. Like nobody has to be in your space. Nobody has to touch you. Nobody has to be using your things when they you don't want them to use when you don't want them to use them. But however, I feel like if we're not like I seen something like kids don't listen to words they listen mm. to actions Damn. like you know what i'm saying which is why i do it in that way because i need her to get good with being like yo you're in my space don't touch me you know what i'm saying and sometimes it might come off harsh to her and but i'm trying to show her like if i say it to her then she can say it to anybody Damn, because yeah, she knows she's my kid and i'm not I love her, so I'm not saying it to be mean, but I need you to understand, even when I love you, don't cross my boundaries. Damn. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think once people understand that it's really us, when we live and walk by something, that's really what they're gonna live and walk by, you know, because a lot of people, like not even a lot of people, I, as a young girl, I didn't know that. Nobody showed me, don't let no people in your personal space. You know what I'm saying? Even if I you love them. Even if you love them. <clears throat> Because I think that was a big part of yeah, it. Yeah, even if you love them, don't you feel be in my part. Because you, yeah, you care for somebody. Because like, or... you care for somebody. Yeah. Now they got be no. Even if I love you, stay out my fucking space. If I don't mm. want to be touched, right? That's how they get to own their body. That's how they get to own their space and own everything around them. And you know, I even encourage that for guys to teach their daughters mm. because it's like one of those things. Like you got to tell you to like yo. Even I'm daddy, but if you don't want me to be, you don't want me to kiss you today, I won't. Even mm, if it's on, you know, on your facts. cheek. Like if you don't, if, if, a, a if, if a kid pushes you off and they don't feel, my bad. I'm sorry, baby. Yep. You need to tell them because they need to know, like if another man that's not daddy comes to me and just kiss him. If I say no, I said no. And I tell my daddy no. Right. And my daddy respects when I say, so you're not my daddy and you don't respect think, when I'm saying bro, no. But, even, but my daddy respects when I'm saying even, no. So even in who that, the fuck but, you think you but are? Even in that example, right? Real I shit. feel like. That's why I think we, like you said, we got to do a better job of teaching our yeah. kids what's better because I can see, I can see in moments where 
you might try to give your, your son or your daughter a yeah, kiss little, and they'd be like, yes. they be like, come here, give me a so kiss. I see it, oh, and that's not okay. Not we got to okay, change you that. Know what? Because you know, now, they, now it's repetition. That, that, right. that's, that's, they, they learn that that's like, okay. You, you, kids go over their family member, oh, let Uncle Johnny give you a hug. Let, like, I might not be comfortable with Uncle fucking Johnny. No, right. I don't want to hug him. He's weird. Right. So... Let them not want to hug them. She right. don't want to hug. And I think and that stick up for them. She don't want to hug them. Sorry, it, 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 that becomes like you know what like I mean? that's how you that's yeah. your learning pattern, right? That's, that's your that's your exactly. that's your, your subconscious now. Exactly. So, so it's like, man, because I exactly. care for them, or because they care for me, uh, I'm gonna let them give me a hug. Right. Well, I, or I'm a, I'm because I'm that's uncle. I'm give, that's uncle or auntie. Yeah, I now, have to. Now let that them hug me. goes from a kiss. Now right. that kiss goes from sex. Right. Right. So it's like, I think that's a great point, man. I think you gotta be good at that. Do a better job of just teaching our kids and just as young men. Yeah. I just, yo, you gotta understand that no means no, and I get it, bro. Like, yo, trust me, like trying to convincing a girl to say yes isn't cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get how it can look, like, yeah, bro. Like, I'm nah, you're not. Trust me. Trust me. And I just feel like we gotta keep telling our and, young men this and, and just showing different. Right. And I think a lot of problem is to, you know, like men don't talk to uh, other little boys yeah. about their built up tension yep. that they don't know where it's coming and from. And how to release it. And how to release it. You know what I'm saying? So without knowing, they're just doing and not knowing. Like, you know, you may not have to do it this way. You might, bro, like real shit, you may have to tell your son how to <laughs> go get off by his goddamn yeah, self. I don't know. Nah, it's crazy. I'm not saying it nah, to be wrong. I'm nah, just saying you might got to tell right. them, like, bro, you don't need no girl to do nothing because for you. Somebody, you feel what I'm saying? Like real shit. For a man that doesn't know, like even I told you, like yeah. even like coming up, I feel like you know I was so used to being a man. I thought that like me getting off, having sex or whatever it can be. But if I had a mentor in my in my life or with somebody to tell you, like because I feel like men don't talk about responsible sex in those right. Days. We talk about sex a lot with, with right. each other, right? We talk about like yeah, that's my that's my dog. Yeah. My little son gonna get all the girls. Just even the way we speak about right. it, right? My son gonna get all the women when he grew up. He gonna be a soul snatcher, etc., etc. Et I'm like that's not cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you don't have somebody teaching you, bro. When you are horny, okay. What do you do? You can go get off yourself, or you can focus on other ways so you don't be as horny, right? right? right. There's other ways to get off. Right. But when you you're go not running, when you you're not go, right, it's when you're so not taught shit. that, you think you equated with like the I only, only got way it to go get off is, is I to gotta get, somebody, get a girl, and if a girl say no, I gotta get off one way or another. So, bitch, mm. you just gonna have to be mad, right. and that's nah, not that's okay. A good point. Yeah. So, I think you know. I just feel like we we all got some growing and yeah, learning to do when it comes sure. to that situation. Hopefully, it is allegedly. Yeah. Hopefully, this shit not not true. You said T. I yeah. said it wasn't true. And I would hope, and I would hate. I mean, like babe. I said, I mean, look, I don't wish nothing on nobody. But what I will say is, I also, I don't wish nothing bad on nobody. But I do hope everybody has the day they they deserve. Mm, that's and fact. that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I just want to say, yo, thank you for the new listeners, the old listeners, anybody that just turned in, tuned in today. You uh, know, it look bay. It look a little different because you know the team ain't here. The snowstorm outside. We appreciate you. That's. The people that still listen to us, that still fucking with us, yo, thank you. Um, Mr. J. Hill. Hiller Bay is here. Gemini Scorpio Podcast, episode 57. God damn. Woo! And we are out. It's a wrap, baby.